When getting started with video editing, you need to make sure you're setting off on the right foot, and this video will give you a better understanding of Premiere and get you well on the way to using it more efficiently. Before we even look to start importing footage, one of the things that I'd recommend doing is creating a Premiere master file which you duplicate for each project. The purpose of this is so that every time you start a new project, you'll have all of your common bin or folder structures, your keyboard and screen layouts will be set to your preferred working style, and you won't be wasting time opening up your favourite panels or changing settings for your editing. To get started, first open Premiere and create a new project. Make sure that you save this to a general space in your main projects folder and name it something like master project file. Once this is done, you'll be able to start customising your workspace, keyboard layout and project settings to your needs and requirements, as well as your screen layout. With Premiere settings, these can be very specific to the user and their needs, so we'll take a quick look at these now, but they're worth exploring in more detail on your own to see what works best for you. To access the settings, if you're using Windows, go to Edit, then Preferences, then General, which will pop this box up. The group of settings changes here will allow you to do a multitude of things such as select the behaviours of Premiere when opening new bins, the overall look of the program, how it handles audio and audio interfaces, all the way through to behaviours of the timeline. Going back to keyboard settings, you can change these based on your preferred way of working. If you've moved to Premiere from Final Cut for example, you can select this or create a new keyboard layout based on the way you used to work in Final Cut. This means you don't need to learn all new layouts. Also, as you progress with the program, you might find that some short keys just aren't in the best place, or that some aren't being used and taking up real estate on your keyboard. So switch them out and this will make your workflow more efficient. Your next options for customizing your workflow is to move the panels around for your needs and monitor space. My main monitor up top is more color accurate and therefore is my preview and playback monitor. My wider monitor is then free to house the rest of my panels that I need for editing. Once you have your perfect setup, you can save this as a custom setup, meaning you'll be able to call upon this whenever you need. But if you save your master project file with this layout selected, then every time you create a new project, this will be your default layout. And the final bit for customising before you close it down is to create, colour and order your bins. Bins are basically storage spaces for various media or other usable objects within Premiere, such as music, sound effects, graphics, or adjustment layers. To get this set up, think about the types of media you'll be using throughout your edits. So start off with sequences, then think about music, sound effects, graphics, voiceovers, shoot media, and so on, until you have listed out the different likely options. Color code these for clarity and you're all set. Now all you need to do is save this project, close it down, and you're ready to duplicate and start working on your new projects. And to get started, that's the first thing we'll do. Start by duplicating that project, move it into the appropriate folder for the project, rename it and open it. All your settings and layout should be there, ready for you to import your files. With the organisation of your files, do look into programs like Hedge or Kino, as these offer a much safer way of transferring data from your shoot media onto your machine media. Programs like these also allow you to batch move, name and order your clips, ready to ingest into Premiere. When it comes to organising your media, if you're not using Kino or Hedge, make sure you're checking the number of clips on your shoot media, making sure they're all copied across onto your edit machine. Then, you can start building a decent folder structure. For this, you want to think about the types of footage that you've captured for your project and create the relevant folders. This is another point where you can create a master folder structure that you can duplicate for each project. So the folders you may want to have are things like interviews and B-roll. With B-roll being a further structure, you can separate into additional folders based on the subject, like interior, exterior, drone, time-lapse, and so on. Once these folders are created and you've moved all of your clips into their relevant folder, you can go ahead and drag the top-level folder into your media folder in Premiere. 
This will create the subfolders as sub bins, keeping everything organized in the same way both inside and outside of Premiere. Once these files are imported and Premiere has finished doing its thing, you can look at color coding your clips. Again, base this on the type of clip. So you could color code your interview footage with the standard magenta, standard B-roll as mango, and drone footage as forest, for example. Now that you've given yourself a really good start, you'll be able to start pulling that edit together. So make sure you check out the next video in the series with wet photo video. Mm -hmm.